wonder how we see our image in the mirror? Now, to furthermore discuss about this, here's Carl to give focus in concave mirrors and determine the lost of the images formed. L is for location, and it refers to the location of the image behind the mirror. In order for us to see where the image formed, we will create the diagram with the lines that represent how light travels through. The diagrams look like this. It includes pole, focal point, principal axis, center of curvature, and the light rays. Lorena Nayana, may I ask for some help in explaining how these lines are drawn? Sure, Carl. The lines are drawn like this. To draw these diagrams, we will have to recall the two rules of reflection for concave mirrors. The first rule states that any incident ray traveling parallel to the principal axis on the way to the mirror will pass through the focal point upon reflection. The second rule states that any incident ray passing through the focal point on the way to the mirror will travel parallel to the principal axis upon reflection. Let us draw the lines. Pick a point on top of the object and draw two incident rays traveling toward the mirror. Once these incident rays strike the mirror, reflect them according to the two rules of reflection for concave mirrors. Then, mark the image of the top of the object. Thank you, Lorraine and Ayana. Now let's go back to the location. Take a look at this. I am now standing at the center of curvature, applying the diagram. Observe the lines and where my image will form. The letter of plus represents the orientation, which may either be upright or inverted. Concave mirror can be formed both upright and inverted image. Most of the time, object facing concave mirror form inverted image. This happens when the object is placed beyond the center of curvature, at the center of curvature, between the center of curvature and focus, or at the focus. Meanwhile, an upright image is formed when the object is placed between poles and focus. The S in lost stands for size. Well, you must be thinking about the different sizes of mirrors, like pocket mirrors or wall mirrors. Well, no, we'll be talking about different types of size. Once you're in front of mirror, you can either be enlarged, reduced, or look in the exact same way. Alright, same with the previous two discussions. Let us see a ray diagram. I am now standing here. What do you observe in the size of the image? Is it smaller or bigger? How about the orientation and location? When it comes to the last characteristic of image form in mirrors, the T in dust stands for type. There are two possible types of image form. Virtual and real. Real images happen most of the time, and virtual images only happen when the object is in front of the focus. Let us remember that the image is real if the image is either inverted or in front of the mirror. Meanwhile, an image is virtual if the image is either upright or behind the mirror. Let us now apply all the factors in identifying the image. In this diagram, let us try to figure out the last. Well, I guess my time is up. I hope you understand everything about the ray diagram in concave mirrors. See you in the next videos. This is Carl Matthew Vipena of San Mateo National High School, signing off.